I'm going to officially welcome and open the 2024 annual meeting for Frontier Community Access Television Board of Directors meeting. Tonight is January 11th, 2024. The time is about 8 o'clock p.m. Our agenda is going to go as follows. I will do my welcoming address. I am going to give my uh, general manager's report that's going to review 2023. Kevin will do his youth outreach coordinator report for 2023 as well. And then we'll hold a question and answer session for anybody present that would like more information. And then we'll do an adjournment. I think I'll say we'll do an adjournment. <laughs> we'll do it in German. That'd be good. No, I don't speak German. <laughs> Nine. Google Translate will take up the Nine. Nine. Overall, 2023 was a very productive and exciting year for Frontier Community Access Television. Along with its usual duties, the station was involved with video documenting Deerfield's 350th celebration and was also focused on transforming the station and studio into an attractive, up-to-date community media center. While certainly a busy year, there were several important tasks and projects completed that will greatly help the station in fulfilling its 2024 goals. The usual duties of FCAT throughout 2023 consisted of covering South County local events, government meetings, frontier school functions, and also managing our three channels. Coverage of local events and government meetings was overseen by yours truly, Jonathan Boshin. The government meetings consisted mainly of select board meetings and also the four annual town meetings. FCAT was responsible for covering select board meetings for the towns of Conway, Deerfield, and Sunderland, and also archiving posting select board meetings from all four towns. Waitley select board meetings are now covered by the town, utilizing Zoom and the Now, and the meetings are then sent to FCAT. In addition to select board meetings, FCAT also provided coverage of the four annual town meetings and also the three special annual meetings that took place in the autumn. On FCAT's end, coverage of these seven meetings was well executed, and thus superb video recordings of the meetings were produced. Other usual community events covered by FCAT consisted of lectures and talks put on by the Historical Societies of Conway and Waitley the four, and the four public libraries. These events were covered and produced by the FCAP production assistants. The coverage of all events related to Frontier Regional School were overseen by Kevin Murphy, and these events consisted of sporting functions, school plays and concerts, and also graduation events. As these are all school-related projects, they utilize both FCAP production assistants and most importantly, student volunteers. This provides a learning experience to Frontier students. Kevin's Frontier projects and his role as the Youth Outreach Coordinator are documented in a separate report. The management of the cable channels was overseen by Jonathan Boshin, and this included programming the channels and maintaining the bulletin boards. Programming consisted of events and lectures and meetings covered by FCAT, public domain material, which consisted mainly of vintage documentaries of industrial films from the 1930s through the 1960s, FCAT documentaries produced by Jonathan Boshin or Kevin Murphy, and also a new bi-weekly four to 10 minute common interest news program entitled The South County Spotlight. In addition, outside programming was also aired consisting of musical concerts and lectures produced by other Massachusetts public access stations, the Library of Congress, or the National Archives, and also other nationally syndicated shows released under Creative Commons such as Democracy Now!, Music and the Spoken Word, and Polka Time with Ed Targonsky. The bulletin board is another important part of the FCAT cable channels. A few hundred slides were designed for the board that were produced by Jonathan A. Boshin, and each slide made use of fonts, colors, and graphics to communicate important community bulletins. Along with its usual duties, FCAT also oversaw the coverage of the Deerfield 350th celebration that took place throughout 2023. 
Events consisted of numerous historical lectures, the Deerfield 350th Parade, a fireworks display, chicken barbecue, a special 350th softball game against the town of Northfield, who also celebrated its 350th celebration this year. And I lost my spot saying now, hold on. <laughs> oh, dances, performances, and open houses as well. The most frequent events that occurred throughout the year were the 350th lectures. And these were documented by FCAP Production at Assistant Marie Thomas, who did a very nice job with those. The 350th events, the 350th events that FCAP devoted the most amount of resources into covering consisted of the parade, which was directed and produced by Jonathan Boshin, and also the softball game, which was directed and produced by Kevin Murphy. Both events were live streamed to the web and the streams recordings were well executed and produced on FCAT's behalf. It's worth noting that both streams were critical to Deerfield celebration as the softball game took place in Northfield while the parade took place on the extremely rainy day. The streams allowed Deerfield residents to watch these historical events in the comfort of their own home. Another focus of FCAT this year was to transform the station and studio into an up-to-date community media center that can fully and professionally serve all basic aspects of media production. The community editing room was updated with new computer desks, furniture, a carrot coffee machine, and it was also decorated. In addition, the station is also slowly building a library devoting to books, and significant movies and documentary to assist in educating FCAD members, volunteers, and production assistants on media production. The studio was extensively upgraded as well. Kevin Murphy constructed a beautiful new set which can be used for recording talk shows and also podcasts. A second backdrop set was also put together which consists of a white seamless backdrop, green screen, black background, and new set lighting. New studio equipment was also purchased, consisting of a Canon XA60 camcorder, teleprompter, and a podcast set consisting of four microphones and stands, headphones, and a Rodecaster Pro 2 audio board, as well as set lighting. FCAT's takeout equipment has also been fully updated and stocked and now consists of six XA55 Canon cameras, two which are reserved for the schools, and four which are available for takeout by FK, yeah, FCAT staff and community members, two Zoom recorders, and five lapel microphones, which are all available to everybody to take out. Moving forward in 2024, the station is going to focus on two main areas. The first is community engagement, which involves recruiting more members and board members, hopefully, to get involved with FCAT in both a volunteer and production standpoint. The second focus will be to relocate and have the FCAT cast the server installed into the Sunderland Town Hall. The, fir the first focus will be done through the following means. Kevin Murphy will continue to work with Frontier students and offer classes and volunteer opportunities to them. Jonathan Boshin will continue to reach out to the adult public at local community events. And FCAT will offer education programs consisting of video production and editing classes, video and movie screenings and discussions, and possibly, possibly bringing guest speakers to do classes and talks on media production. The station, studio, and equipment will be promoted on the FCAP website, channel bulletin boards, and also community engagement literature, such as a little trifle we're in the process of putting together. I'm just waiting on some nice photos of the station and the studio, which we're going to do tomorrow since everything's all very pretty looking, as you can see. It is the hopes that this plan will drive up interest in the station and recruit not only volunteers, but also future media producers. The second focus of the station in 2024 is to relocate the cast server to the Sunderland Town Hall and also upgrade it to handle HD channels. To begin with, 
FCAD is going to need to purchase a new FCAD server to handle HD channels, most specifically the coming HD channel that Conway is in the process of getting. Since in a few years all cable contracts will be renewed for HD channels, this HD capability will allow FCAD to easily transition from standard def into high definition. Also for several reasons, the new server needs to be installed into the Sunderland Town Hall. The main reason is to centralize FCAD's operation to one specific location instead of having it spread out in two different buildings located several miles away. There is a space in the Sunderland Town Hall where the server will be installed into. Overall, it's going to be an exciting year for Frontier Community Access Television and one that is going to put our facilities to full use. While FCAT will continue to fulfill its duties and serve our four towns of Conway, Deerfield, Sunderland, and Waitley, it will also grow from both a volunteer and content standpoint. While some of the station's goals may be challenging, they are challenges that the station is ready to take on. And that is my report Thank of you. 2023 and review. On that note, I am going to turn it over to Kevin Murphy, who's going to discuss his role in the station and the work he did with the students. So, Kevin, and then I will come back up. Is it okay if I sit? Yeah, yeah. go. Yeah. All right. All right. Excuse me, Peter. This is the Youth Outreach Report for 2023 at the uh, annual meeting of 2024. Um, it's been a fun year, uh, a lot of uh, new excitement, new energy coming to fruition here. Uh, I'll begin from the top, uh, the annual Music Telethon. It's something that we do every fall and we raised another $5,500 for the music department and for FCAP. Uh, the volunteers, thank you very much for coming out to support their program and, and filming it. Uh, thank you to the crew that came out to support all of our events at Frontier, including the coffee house, uh, the plays, the holiday concerts, and so forth. All the Frontier events, um, we have a lot of um, uh, student volunteers and we have some new adult volunteers. Uh, Marie, thank you very much for coming out to these events. I Dear, was sick for the telephone. <laughs> What's that? I was sick for yeah. the telephone. You missed the telephone. I missed it. It was cold. The Deerfield 350th, uh, we had some, uh, you know, <laughs> challenges with rain. Uh, it was rain, but, uh, you know, we, we stuck through it and got a lot of wet, and uh, that was a lot of fun. Thank you for the, uh, all the energy that went into that one. Northampton uh, Concert at Look Park. Uh, each year we get asked to uh, assist in Filming that concert is a giant concert, eight or ten bands. Uh, it's outdoors, it's uh, multiple cameras, we bring equipment, uh, we share an equipment and we get to try out our new equipment. And that's a lot of fun and we have student volunteers for that as well. Uh, Green Wave, I stuck it in the wrong spot. Green Wave hockey coverage continues and will be, it is still well received. The last, um, this year we lost Lou Burdo. He's our commentator if you watch the Green River Hockey. Yeah. He's like hockey mania, super good. Uh, he's now full-time coach with the Green Wave, which opens plenty of doors for our new upcoming uh, commentators, Mason and Oliver, who quickly filled the void. Three games under their belt, doing really well. Watermelon Wednesdays continues to be covered. Uh, Paul has his 25th year, I believe. I'm actually looking to do some documentary work on that because it's a big deal in the Valley. Um, so uh, we've been covering it for, I don't know, 12 years. Um, but yeah, Watermelon Wednesdays, we continue to enjoy doing that. Uh, recently, uh, we have a student at Frontier who's a Rubik's Cube champion. Uh, Elijah. Elijah. Uh, he's, uh, oh, really? Yeah, so so yeah, he's, he's, he's got like three world records. <laughs> Get his book, you know. He's and, good friends with me since I didn't. Yeah, he's, he's good friends with our, our crew. And not, that's not the reason why we filmed it, but yeah. he approached and says, hey, I want to do a live stream of this. So we got together and, and we did this three years ago, uh, two years ago, and then this year we did it. Uh, Deerfield Elementary School, lots of fun. It's just an odd thing to do that we don't normally get that opportunity. And is that on the YouTube channel? Yeah, it's on the YouTube channel. Oh, you click the right. live, so what's, not, what's interesting is uh, on the YouTube channel, you got to click the live tab to see the live events. 
So you wouldn't find it in the regular videos. Yeah. I don't know how to fix that. I, I think with, with sorry, no, yeah, go ahead. The, 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 the live, I know we can put it on the playlist, but you know how just when we upload something, it just goes on the uploads? Yeah. So it might be something that we can just put under the upload, you know, upload. So yeah. You know, we have to do a separate upload for it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't so we'll try to make it easier. Yeah. So when live events go under a different tab, and people don't see them sometimes. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Bruce keeps. It's really fun to watch. Uh, let's see. And then, so that was at the elementary school. TEDx Deerfield. Uh, we got invited to do that five years ago, six years ago, and. Um, and with COVID in between, we've been doing them ever since, and. Uh, Last year was not a TEDx event because of licensing. So what happened was uh, they rebranded it as something from Deerfield uh, Academy called uh, what's it called? Ideas. Oh, yeah. it's called Ideas. Yeah. But it's the same principle, you know. Uh, TEDx style talks, uh, four camera shoots, live stream, and all that. It's a lot of fun. And it's TEDx again this year. It's going to be happening February 11th. Uh, Saturday. Okay. Uh, no, I forget it's a Saturday. Tenth, late tenth, somewhere now. I give you the dates. Uh, we're gonna do it again. It's gonna be really exciting. Uh, let's see. What did I skip over here? Crowd 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 uh, so I'm featuring that this year because um, this is where we just finished six years of crowd cinema. Um, and we celebrated that with the posters that you, you probably saw in the uh, studio. Um, and what it is, is a summer project that we, we, we jumped on with Northampton Community Television, uh, where we get to do one scene of a, of a movie. And, and over the years, it's been Fairless Bueller's Day Off, Beetlejuice, Castaway, Jurassic Park, Toy Story, and Star Wars. And each of these years, Ben Roberts has been our main director and or CG professional. And if you've seen any of these um, videos, I mean, the CG is just incredible. Um, award winning, if we, we should submit it somewhere. Yeah, uh, should. Star Wars uh, featured um, our favorite, uh, Greg Franceschi was just here. He was Obi-Wan. Uh, but uh, yeah, he was Obi Wan, uh, and Toy Story was completely CG, right? It was mo uh, we did mostly the, uh, green screen the toys, and then it was like yeah, we I had some like standing toys for uh, uh, Buzz and Woody. We had some lost toys like uh, rubber chickens, uh, stuff like that. We had I'm not sure if you remember from the original. There was like a uh, like metal spider with a baby head that was completely oh, CG. <laughs> Uh, so we were able to have some like fun interactions with that. Talking about the toys. Yep, where like we had the CG spider baby pulling on the real buzz, trying to like get the arm back and such. Yeah. So you'll get a copy of this with the links to click on and you can watch all these. Okay, they were Jurassic Park too? Yep, yeah. Jurassic Park. Yeah, so so awesome. they're all, you yeah. can click the entire, you can, yes. click, you can click the playlist and they'll all play, or you can click one at a time. Okay, right. Hey, that's it, fcat.tv. Well, you can just, click, I mean, you're going to get this document, and you can just click on that yeah. like this. This stuff is just something that's blue. Everything in blue is clickable, sure. but it's on our FCAT Media YouTube channel. They're all on our YouTube. Right. Uh, so, um, What's, what happens then is these clips that we do, which is a certain scene, get glued together by Northampton Open Media and put on uh, at the Academy of Music in Northampton. So you do a scene and they do a scene? And oh, there's, there's, you know, there's, there's like 35, there's 35, like 35 groups. Per, oh. yeah, 35 to 100 groups, I don't know, whatever the number is. And, and, and you just put them all together. And, and that makes the whole show so yeah. Everyone gets their own video. Yeah, and the academy great. is, yeah. you know, 150 people sitting there watching, hey, this is ours, uh, that's my scene, this is live streaming? Uh, they had during COVID, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, but it, it's now on YouTube. You can watch it. You can watch the full thing. And I have it right here, crowdsourcinema.com. Yeah. Has two, because they had a website change. Oh, yeah. And the other one is Northampton Open Media forward slash crowdsourcinema. You click on any one of those links and watch the entire movie that was made. Some are with Legos, some are made with uh, real life actors, yeah. some were... Um, Sock puppets. Yeah, there were so, some really creative ideas, and some are really like very um, avant-garde, you know, they really put a lot in. So you'll see, it's a lot of fun. We, we went all in, we wanted to make sure it was a high grade, 
yep. CG animation yeah. film. Thanks to Ben and Leonard. I, I I remember watching it because I was like, oh, what, you know, what, what was this? That was when it was posted. And I, I was like, oh wow, they, you guys did a really good job. I, I remember watching it. And uh, Connor maybe did a good job. And I can't remember. Toy Story. Yeah. Story. Yeah. 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 Everything we can to make sure ours uh, feels like the original, while also uh, maintaining the quality. For Most educational people. reasons, it's a great yeah. opportunity to do one scene very well yeah. yep. instead of trying to do the whole movie right. yeah. 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 So the one scene, we put all that energy into it and we feel good about it. That's it's just like, one it's, movie. It's a sample. Yeah. Um, well, well filming shooting. shooting. Yeah, shooting. Was shooting was like four days. Yeah. How much is that? About two months. Two or <laughs> more. <laughs> more. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and if the one you're going to do it too, is this helps give the kids a taste of what goes into composing the scene and doing it too, and see if this is a field that they seriously want to It's film production, yeah, group, you know, center. It's yeah, like a good opportunity for the kids. Yeah, so we just keep doing it. The guy that played Obi Wan. Yeah, Obi Wan. I was wondering how you got the real guy. No, that's through the high school. No, it's here. No, it's through Northampton Community Media. Our their FCAP down in Northampton right. runs it, and they put it out to all of what. Oh, by the way, it's all it's open to all of New England, but. But but it's centered on yeah, sure. Northampton. It's yeah. sort of their it's their, their thing. Program. Their That's thing. Cool. Yeah. Okay. But here, let me tell you, what happened was it got so popular that Brattleboro decided to do the exact same thing in Boston. So there are three versions of it all the time, and it's a collaborative thing. They pick the same movie on purpose. Mm -hmm. So what happens is sometimes uh, some groups don't follow through and they don't deliver their scene. And it's like you got a hole, so they go, Brattleboro, what do you got? And they get that scene and they put it in, or Boston, what do you got? So our scene might be in Boston. We can watch it. I, we have to go look for it. I don't know if our scene got picked, but that's it could have happened. Yeah, hopefully that like how do you go about like submitting, you know, that to, to, to Northampton Open Media. Uh, yeah, at this link. You go to see yeah. you get all that information. Because my cool. granddaughter did a scene from Star Wars up in Vermont. Right. Right. And it's interesting, if you watch yeah. each of them, you see the different takes on the different scenes. Yeah. Like this group did this, oh, that, this one did this one. So you can look at our scenes and see how they did it, you know. Um, all right. FCAT score. You go from ZG to a shock button. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that yeah. does happen. Yeah. The, uh, or sometimes when you watch it, like this. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So when they edit the movie together, they also ask for crowdsourced music. So they're always looking for musicians because they don't want any copyrighted oh, right, stuff. Right, sure. And so they, they yeah. la lay down a track that's local musicians. Oh, that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, they, they do a really stand up job. And they've been doing it for many years. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's been longer than we've been doing. We've been doing it six years. And I think they probably did three more years after, before that. Yep. They did Raiders of Lost Ark. They did. Um, uh, Back to the Future. Back to the Whoa. Future, and one more was uh, uh, it's fine. But and they should do like uh, Jason Bourne. <laughs> John Wick. And they, John announced, they announced the movie in like March, and then we have to just, you know, decide on it. Oh, yeah. well, 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 Polar Express would be a good one. Yeah, so we, we, we apply, we say we want to do it, they sign a scene. And, and I actually I have to say, Ben, I have to say, they always give us the most intense scenes they, they know you can do it. They do. <laughs> they do. Seriously, let me do the ring. Right every every <laughs> scene is the every most year. CG needed scene. <coughs> wow. Yeah, they do. Congrats. That's how we ended up with uh, Jurassic Park. Uh, the scene we had was one of the first scenes with the T Rex spitting the Jeep around upside down. Yeah. Uh, we shot it all in there. Wow. The whole thing. Yeah. And Beetlejuice, we shot the. Uh, yeah, Beetlejuice is all in there. In here. <laughs> no, not on the with, the, with the TEDx, uh, like last year, they just couldn't get the licensing. Yeah, yeah. so TEDx, you have to apply for license. It's very strict. You yeah. Yeah. Very, 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 very dot your eyes. And, and this year, they got it back. They got it. They switched official. Yeah. So then you get the, did you get the same kind of scrutiny last year with your editing and stuff of it? Because you said TEDx can be very tough. No, it was more the students that were really hard on me. Really? <laughs> what? That's fine. That's what we do. And stay we in for All right, here we go. Uh, sports, big time, right? So FCAT Sports, all these click links, if you click on 23, you'll, you'll obviously get the, 20, the last year, this year, in Greenfield Hockey. We're grateful for the surge of volunteers around the sports program. Uh, this uh, comes from camera operators, sports commentators, or hosts, you know. Um, 
play-by-play. -play. Frontier students try out new skills and they're particularly proud of their productions. Um, we've expanded to filming tennis last spring with the addition of a new high pod and so, yeah, so on, so on, so on. I mean, it's just roaring forward. We what, 30 plus games a season? Yeah. Um, last year, I think we had 81 or 84. Very, very popular. Well, you had to do that because of the pandemic, though. Well, uh, so, so are you keeping up with that? Or? Yeah. So before the pandemic, we were doing film, uh, doing the sports, but not yeah. at the rate that we're doing now. Right. At the pandemic, of course, we didn't want to see me do JV, so we hit them all. And we just haven't stopped. We, we stopped doing JV as much, but we, we've been hitting them all. So We, we used to, because with COVID, you know, no fan, it was weird for me and Murphy and oh, no There was no fans. Right. So right. the only people that could make noise were the players on the bench and all, everyone had to be masked. So, <laughs> you know, the, my voice was projecting because there's no, you know, surround and, and uh, it, it's just kind of, you know, interesting. Um, yeah. And we had to, some games we would do middle school, JV, then varsity. And it would just be those three back to back. But now it's just JV, varsity. And they kind of do it at a later time this year, which is a little. But I'm also wondering, are parents liking watching it live? Yes. And not coming to the games? What we were. Yeah, that's what you're talking about. You know. Well, so that was an argument from this AD way back when. They said, oh, no, people are going to stop coming. That's not true. I mean, I think, okay, some, I think some people may, may do that, you know, because they can watch it on the TV or whatnot. Like some people might not be able to get here. Yeah, like my, so um, they can watch it. I got a lot of thankful family from the park, like moms, yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. I, everyone, or oh, I feel like almost every game, yeah. you know, there's someone that comes up, like at the end yeah. of the game the other yeah. night, there was a student from South Valley, he even asked, oh, if you guys ever need a commentator, and I said, just reach out to our Instagram mm -hmm. or call the station and get in touch, you and know. Not to mention alumni, too. When they leave and they go off to school, they want to see their kids, yeah, their, their classmates play. Yeah. Yeah. I think the grandparents, is, I mean, sitting on those bleachers, yeah. oh, my, 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 my uncle, uh, my mom bought them the, the seat, basically a cushion seat that can go in the bleacher, and yeah. it's like, like a seat. Yeah. And, it, and she has one, and he has one, because it's a pack of the two, so. Yeah. I just carry my own all the time, one yeah, there you go. Probably have the same one they do. So. I'd like to mention that we have an excess amount of student volunteers this year, and I want to just shout out to Amalia Smith, Benaya Dugan, Desmond D'Angelo, Grogu Prabhuchik, uh, Isaac Warmger, Max Warmger, uh, Killian Seward, um, Mason Smith, Tyler Walkowitz, Braden Raybold, Oliver Cox, Eric Benu. Uh, Logan Walkowitz and Connor Mavius. And if I missed anybody, I tried. I'm sorry. Um, but you got two of your guys are on the championship uh, scholars bowl team or the, 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 the competition. The Mason Smith and Tyler are Tyler. going to Chicago right. and looking for the racing uh, to do a. What is it called? Uh, quiz bowl kind of thing. Quiz bowl. Yep. Oh, and and yeah. 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 fundraising yeah. for that right now. Oh, it's nice. it's yeah. on the line. Going to a national meet. Yep. Uh, I don't think you missed that. Uh, uh, okay, it's chapel. And we showcased our sports productions at the 350 at Deerfield versus Northfield South football yeah. game. Just want to know that that was a lot of fun. It was outdoors, and we had a PA going, and this little kid yes. jumped yeah, on yeah. For, for doing commentary, and he was amazing. Him and, him and Mason did it. How old? So, and I was there too. He was uh, eight. No, I don't even really? think he was 10. He wasn't even he 10. He was, if you watch it, you he, can hear it's so funny. He really wanted to It was to on a PA, so everybody was laughing yeah. the entire time. And, and, and so it was like, you know, me and Mason planned on doing it. You know, uh, Mason, like, thankful for Mason, and especially Tyler and everyone else on our, you know, sports crew that we have. It's, it's nice having a lot of volunteers. Um, last night we almost had too many, you know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's great from almost having no volunteers sometimes last year to, Having two men, yeah. So that kid will be in Frontier at some point? Yeah. No, he's in North. Oh. He was in North. Oh, yeah. Yeah. School choice, school choice. <laughs> 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 oh, no, so what it was is during the summer, it was like a softball. It was like adults. Uh, it was adults. It was a um, 350 celebration. It was right. Yeah. Yeah. And they played they North Field. Because yeah, they, 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 they have their 300. The red department. They have their 300. The red department. They have 350. Yeah, it was a challenge. Stuff. It was a challenge game. With each 350th committee. Those are great. 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 I don't even remember the one. I just remember. Um, the 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 it was close. Deerfield one. Yeah. 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 
Deerfield one. 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 Uh, the co-producers of Avcat Sports, uh, Ben came on as an intern to support the program after losing Alec, uh, who moved on to Greener Pastures. We'll miss him. Everybody moan a sound for Alec, who has got a new job and is no longer with us, but his spirit is still here. Okay. Uh, ben actually volunteered with Avcat when he was a student. You look at those pictures, you'll see him in there. Um, and he was also the auditorium manager at Frontier. So he brings a wealth of technical knowledge, and know-how, so he helps things sound good. Uh, Tom has influenced a number of new student volunteers. <laughs> yeah. He, uh, Ben brings about this. Tom has influenced a number of new student volunteers with their hand acts. Swartz commentary, he's a great mentor. Uh, his groundbreaking efforts and uh, mentorship has made volunteering experience friendly and fun, so much so that we have like five kind of in the works. Uh, we have Isaac. We're go, like, right here. Five Isaac, commentators, though. Isaac, uh, Mason, obviously, uh, Oliver, uh, and Tyler. Um, and me, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and yeah, no, I, I, one thing, I, 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 if I can just interject for one second. Uh, I'm, I, Chris, who used to run FK, he uh, really, like, is the reason why I kind of like stayed around the area and stuck with FK, so it's really, Thanks to Chris. I'm sorry. Right. Sorry. Chris, Chris has really made, um, so when I was with, well, since, since I've been with FCAT, um, we were doing sports, but it was very, very quiet. This is uh, very commentary. We'd pipe into Bear Country once in a while, but it was never, and as soon as Chris came on board, we had Chris, oh. everything took off. Everything took off with our sports. It was because of him that yeah. it grew to yeah. what it is. Yeah. Great and voice. we brought on more commentary, and of course, we owe a lot to Chris's um, spirit behind the sports program. Uh, the studio. So I think it was 20, uh, 2022. No, it was because I just took it from my 22 report. Uh, so 22, last year's um, annual meeting, um, I shared the vision of a studio upgrade. I kind of had this look of what I wanted, and it's, that's exactly yeah. what I wanted. Uh, there has been interest in doing uh, studio productions in the area resident students. So um, we spoke about the doing the set, and then in this podcast style, I showed pictures to John a few times. Just do it. Okay, <laughs> um, Greg, uh, Greg, I didn't mention it here, but oh, no, I did. Alec and Greg Franceschi and I, and I should have brought pictures, but uh, we were in my driveway making the panels. We actually built panels so that we can assemble them here. And so we built them at my house and then we assembled them so we can disassemble them easily, just as easy going on. Yeah, I remember when you, me, John, and Alec all came and were like, nothing was there, you know, yeah. like, and now it's, cause when I came in and saw it for the first time the other night, you know, it was just amazing what it is now. Like it used to just be a wall. <laughs> so yeah. the podcast well, style storage and also yeah, the yeah, podcast awesome. style of having that dampened sound uh, is that invaluable to to um, doing some production work. And, and we already had one show, I'll say that in a second. So we built the modular side black rock. Okay. Studio shows again in twenty twenty two, I you know I said, hey let's do a new show kind of thing. John has been trying to do that for years. And um, we realized that when we hired Patrick, uh, who's not here, wouldn't we hire him in the spring, and now he's been here only, it's only here a short time, and he did the South County Spotlight, and as you guys see, He got that going for us, and we own a lot that of That model is what we want to get going, going. and uh, since he left, uh, John's picked it up, um, and we're looking to grow this program, or programs like it. Uh, did, did he left FK? Yeah, Sorry. yeah, he left uh, the, the industry all the time. He made a career change. He left on good terms with yep. us, so yeah. uh, he just wanted to make a career change. So he's a pretty recent hire, right? Didn't yeah. He? yeah. Okay. So he, he was here like six months or something, no, something like that. He was with no, us. Well, he helped get that off the ground. Yep. Yeah. yeah. His his nice. vision for the the format, his presentation, yeah. his editing, yeah, was all. I think, it, like I said, I think I saw one. It was, I was I, impressed. It was I, yeah. I, I, I watched. I think all three of them, and then a bit of uh, John's as well. I think all of them. I love getting that really short, the short snippet, like here's what's going on, because the, the vision is, is this, that we, we have all these select meetings and board meetings that go on and on for maybe hours right. to hours. We're not tuning into those, huh? we're not. Yeah. We may or may not be. And we may need to be, but we don't know we need to be. And so by doing these little shorts, 
oh, that's important to me. Maybe I'll go check out the next one, or maybe I'll watch the whole thing, because that is important to me. And so, we, as a service community, I think that's the most valuable thing we can do. And I also think, like, you know, especially with the, now the new space, you know, and having episode one of the sports recap, that was pretty cool. I like so, to see that. that yeah, awesome. so I, uh, I think I write that. Uh, new rise, new possibility. Oh, wait, no. Okay. Yeah. So, next page. Sorry. The well, last one. Oh yeah. It's during our December youth classes, which we started had in December, uh, participants decided to make a pilot a podcast. So I gave them a choice: do we do like a film and this and that? They wanted to do podcast, and so they did one. So similar to the spot, South County Spotlight, but for sports, called the Red Hot Roundup, and that's available yes. online. You can of course click the link that's on this document and you oh. get it. Um, yeah. So, and, and, and you know, they're busy guys. They, they do all this stuff at the school too, and they're the commentators for sports. So let's see, let's see if we get this done, but I think they want to do more. And we already have um, the volleyball coach who recently retired, Sean, Sean uh, uh, committed to come do an interview. So that's, that's good. Did he you retire? Yep. Uh, uh, retired from the girls. The Asian, Asian girls, yeah. I talked to him after they um, unfortunately lost in the final four of the state tournament. Um, and I went out, I think it was like Bellingham, I went out to film that. And um, he, uh, we talked, and they, that game actually, they didn't even look themselves, like the girls. And then uh, 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 he said that he was going to stick around maybe one or two seasons for the boys at least. So, um, yeah. But he's done, he's done with the girls, and Courtney, I think, parent is going to take over for the girls at uh, varsity. So, yeah. Um, FCAT is available to assist, assist student filmmakers to produce the entire and upcoming North Hampton Youth Fist Film Festival. I didn't, you can see at the end here, I lost my steam in writing this. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so there's North Hampton Film Festival where we're trying to get students to participate and we want to support them. Essentially, is uh, going to be April showing, so kids have now until April to produce a film under 10 minutes, non documentary style, and uh, so we'll see what happens. But FCAT's here and available. Um, and I want to thank John Boshin for uh, uh, supporting our projects. Uh, sports, the film thing, the studio, everything uh, we owe to John because it's him. He's the one who says it supports us with the technologies and the, you know, the infrastructure to make things happen, the new hires, etc., to support our, our, our projects. Uh, so thanks to John for allowing us uh, to feed our volunteers regularly with food. Um, really helps us to uh, have a leader such such as John with all of this. And yeah, John, can yeah. you get us like almost all new cameras as well? Like, like two new cameras? <laughs> like, that we was have like, new cameras. Yeah, yeah. Like it was pretty awesome. Yeah, oh, so, yeah. yeah. I thought so, you were asking me to get you. No, he was no, saying, no. remember when we asked for two oh. cameras and you got us two cameras? And, and we well, if it's on the table, we can take some red cameras and... Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I remember one, one meeting, um, I filmed with one that you oh, plug in the back, like, not even a... I just, it was funny, it was like a Deerfield Town Hall meeting or something. But. John, you want your seat back? But, you know, yeah, it's your best seat. No, yeah. Well, yeah, actually, it's, well, actually uh, if Kevin said it, they come up. Yeah, we'll, yeah, you we'll still ask a question. Okay, okay. So I, I have two questions. So, so, uh, so now uh, that Kevin's given his report, we're going to do the question and answer uh, portion of the meeting. So uh, for me or Kevin, and we will go from there. So Bob, you have Kevin the uh, okay. question. Um, what are my own men's so I love watermelon, and I'm so thrilled that you guys are still doing it. Um, but Paul, when he talk, when he gets up in front of everybody that's at watermelon Wednesdays, he sometimes mentions FCAT, but not really. He, he, you know, I mean, I think he ought to he ought to mention it more, but he never mentions the fact that that people can go online on our YouTube channel and watch the recording that we're making of it. And, you know, I don't know whether we can make a poster that, that we can put up in the front. I mean, we have a poster that says FCAT. Yeah. But if we can make a poster that says you can watch a recording, I mean, because people walk out of there and they say, this was a great show, but my friend so-and-so would have really loved to have seen it, or yeah. something like that. Yeah. And, or in, on his website where you order tickets, if there could be something that would say, 
this is how you could watch a recording of it. Yeah, they, I think they do have that on their website. Uh, uh, and he does mention it occasionally, and, but that's not important. It still, we still get the most YouTube hits. Yeah. Oh, I, I mean, I believe hundreds it. of thousands. Uh, I, did did you see we, we hit, I think I remember it was last year, we hit a, a million views on, wow. on our channel. And I wow. think that's mainly from the water. What is this? We should celebrate. You should, I know. You should have told me. I didn't. <laughs> I think we're still close around the million mark. Well, we should have a million. We need a million part. I mean, well, we can good. say, like, make a sign or something that says one million views. You know, that's pretty impressive. And we have, like, I, I think in the old days, one of the ways that he attracted much better talent than he normally could attract was because we gave them a really high quality right. recording. I talked to some of the musicians. They're like, Oh, we, we saw this on on, on, on the t on the YouTube, and then we were like, we got to play there. Yeah, because they love yeah. that band. So, I, so I, I mean, band. so that's good for Paul. Yes, and, yes. And, and yes, they do attract wildly better talent than I, you know, than they have any West right to. Waitley, right? Yeah, really, yeah. right? There were forty people in the West Waitley. Yeah. Show. I mean, something that's interesting as well is with the um, Watermelon Wednesdays. I remember that that was like one of the uh, summer things that you know. Usually for the sports, you know, it's year round except for in the summertime, yeah. uh, unless we do like those summer. Because you did some of those, right? Yeah, I, mean, I did. I remember doing some of those. Yes. Um, and that it was me, you, Al, and, and it was Corpita. Who? It was a girl that was with us. Yeah, but it was you, uh, Trip. Yeah, I forgot her last name, first name, but yeah, 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 you did that. So yeah, it's it's a, it's actually a student uh, opportunity for the summers to film music concerts. Uh, it's such a good training. For me, it's it's personal growth. I keep getting better at it. I get better with the sound, better with the lighting, better with the... Maybe more, and you know, it's another thing volunteers can do during the summer as well. Yeah. Yeah. But whenever I record something, a John down then lends me a camera to record something that is not very important for you guys. But, and, but I always try to make a point of saying you can watch this. And a lot of people don't know that we have a channel on YouTube and that they can go there and they can watch these special recordings. And a lot of people maybe. are still not not understand what public access television is. Maybe a solution, yeah. you know, me or Murphy or you know, someone can go up on stage beforehand, you know, before the show starts and just say, Hey, by the way, we live stream Watermelon Month on FCAT. Uh, you actually live streamed. Oh, it's live streamed. No, well, no, 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 we did. No, no, we did no, through no. COVID. We did. Yeah, we did through COVID. I'm saying, I'm but, saying, like, yeah, you know, then yeah. people or just say, I think it would be hard for you to take the microphone away from Paul. Yeah, no, I'm saying, just maybe, yeah. just like, say, hey, no, you Paul. Know, if we tell Paul, he'll, he'll, he'll yeah, just say, oh, you know, we upload the videos. <laughs> no so my other question was, in the studio, you have a green screen. Yes. Have you used it? And I mean. You uh, know what? I, I, so the you didn't mention it, and I think it's one of the coolest things. Yeah. I mean, I know you like you, you like your podcast, and I think that's great. And and I and I've seen that you. The so the green screen that. has been there, uh, has been there for a few years. Through so our summer program movies, those posters. Yeah. Were all shot in front of green. They screen. were. Yeah. Okay. That's Except right. for one was blue screen. Uh, that is Castaway. Castaway. Castaway was outside because yeah. of COVID. But yeah, uh, they were all done in front of the green screen. Cool. So, yeah, I, I, I read the term green screen, but I read about movies and I've never yeah. seen one, you know? Yeah, right. so, yeah, yeah. so we, we use it for spe special effects movies. You could do it in a new situation. We actually thought of it, we, we actually considered a second set for doing like a news or an interview thing where you, you're in front of the green and then you can switch it back down however you want. One thing I am going to be doing is I want to use a seamless white backdrop for interviews because some of the things I do want to do with the South County Spotlight Show is maybe bring on the guest to interview them and instead of doing it the podcast set, I'll do it at the white seamless backdrop I said. And that, that actually reminds me, uh, I think that's where the green is now. Right. Black. White and green. Right. And we have all those uh, the lights that you saw. The light. We have two sets of those lighting Are these all on curtains where you can just... No, we have to take them up and set them down. Okay, so it takes a while to switch. We, yeah. we don't have a real good, you know, curtain system yet. That's something That's that something we need, need to do. Yeah, that is it's that a, is a series of yardsticks taped yeah. together. Yeah, but uh, you have... And then we, like, use a steamer on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so if you had, like, three... 
curtain rod things that you could just, you know, park. The on. tricky thing about it with green screens in particular is shadows. Yeah. Uh, when you have to be tight. Yeah. yeah, it has to be really, really tight. And when you start using curtains, the curtains start to form memory in their folded up state. Oh. So even when you start to stretch it up tight, the curtain will be like, eh, actually, I'm going to try to be a, a ripple again. And ripples cause shadows. And now yeah. you're having to do like manual rotoscoping around yeah. everything. Maybe you'll need to have the on rollers. On rollers so you can roll them down. Yeah, the yeah. And then detach them at the bottom. Yeah, they used but to do the new rollers. Like, older TVs. And you can roll them they down. Still do that. And yeah, they do. They have a weighted, they do weighted it, thing. So that the sounds, yeah, that's how it's done. It's like a trial uh, projector style. Really so uh, the best if you have a maybe a perfect thing, and velvet, you velvet works, how yeah, helps the, the, a lot. The, 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 what do you call it? The stre uh, uh, stretchy pants stuff. What is it called? Uh, like that, like, what? The spandex. Spandex. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Spandex yeah. kind of. If you get a big one of those, that's the way to do it. Yes. Yeah. Well, and those have been Yeah. But then. Sometimes you need, you know, a really, really large right. thing to be a full seamless back. Well, it was amazing when we did when we did Star Wars and Jurassic Park how much we needed. Yeah, we were using all of the screen, and then we had to rotoscope the rest of it right. because, or we had like travel green screens. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and one thing, uh, just kind of like a little off the topic, but with the sports. What uh, Mason, I think, started doing, they would pick out a player for soccer, like in the fall sports, and they would go down, they'd bring the camera down and uh, interview that, that player really quick. And I, I remember last year, <coughs> what they would do before the hockey game, when I covered a couple, just a couple of those, was uh, Lou would interview either a coach or a player, you know, in between periods or before the game. So it was just, you know, I mean, something. Oh, a surprise, we have a new, 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 Product coming in line, I announced it. A GoPro. Yeah. Oh. So, so the way you mask us oh. is that they use a GoPro right in front of the, the commentator. This is Nesson. Nesson uses yeah. GoPro. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 And, and it because it's a wide angle, mm -hmm. and you just plug it in as your, your source. Right. That would be a fun thing you get for this station for this reason. The other thing too with the news, I would like to document some of these. Road races that go on, and being a runner, I thought I could wear it and run the race and edit that footage into the news video. So, yeah. I think in the like past couple of years, we've really wanted to up the quality of everything. So, so we're trying to more you stabilize your face yeah. shot. So, so you can you can do a lot of things. Hi, this is, so you get your face there. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I, yeah I mean, Other questions? Well, I guess uh, I'm I'm sorry. This is the first meeting I've been to, but. I just have a question. I'm interested that we're not talking about budgets at all. Because I still don't understand so, uh, where all the money comes from and how much money. Budget have. is discussed in March, in March. Is the budget meeting, okay. and uh, we can. That will probably be a, a hybrid meeting, but I will put together the budget then and go over every uh, where the money comes from, which comes from by uh, cable subscription fees. There is a bill that's trying to be put through to get more money from streaming. So fingers crossed that goes through, but we'll see. Well, it should, because it's the same thing. They're using the public right of way to, to bring their, you know, whether you're getting just internet or whether you're getting the cable. I mean, we've got the, we've got the cord. We don't get cable anymore. You stream. Oh. So we only see you on YouTube. We don't see the channels. Yeah, one thing I, I, I remember you mentioned when the uh, uh, first time was uh, the new system. You know how we used to have like what was it, channel twelve on the on the TV? Yes. Is that gonna be something we're gonna try to do again or we still have channel twelve. How many channels do we have? We have three channels? We, have three. Channels. we have three channels with the program and then we have, we have two bulletin board on channel. Yeah. Or that one can only, the one here for Sunderland can only run the bulletin board and live stream the meetings in there. Uh, Waitley and Conway have a channel 15 that they sort of manage on their own. Oh, really? So we're not really involved with that, but they can't program them. They're just PowerPoints, basically. And uh, one thing I uh, was like, the, I went to green, the Greenfield game that I tried to cover the girls on. And the 4G, you know the 4G thing we have for Verizon? It didn't work in Greenfield, and luckily I asked uh, one of the Greenfield. Uh, you mean the hotspot? Yeah, it, it, didn't really, it didn't really work very well. Um, so I wouldn't have been able to live stream it uh, unless I got onto the Greenfield Wi Fi. Um, 
Mm. And I got the path, like I was able to from, uh, I talked to the, I think the athletic director, whoever runs the Athletic director. Yeah, I talked to him. He gave me the wrong passcode. And then I asked one of the uh, students that was filming, and he had the right passcode, and I, looked, I was luckily able to go live then, but it was just, you know, something. Uh, so uh, the, the process for purchasing and so forth, if it's over a certain amount, it gets presented to the board, the board votes on it. If it's $10,000, it has to go through a procurement. Yeah. And then each Can I say something that we're either, so, I mean, we're not talking about budgets. One of the reasons we don't talk about budgets much yeah. was that we used to have to hold Chris's feet to the fire. He didn't have to spend any money at all. And he was so petrified of running out of money. And and I don't want to say like FCAP was flush, you know, but but it was hard to get him to part. I mean John has been much better of of oh, you know, that thing that raises the camera up in the air. But that's a great idea. We need the high five. We need one of those. It'll make everything better. John gets it, or you get it, somebody gets it, you know, and, and but Chris never wanted to spend money I on think, the exhibit. I think that the, the sports program and the things that this station does are just incredible. Yeah. Um, I came from a much smaller station where, you know, we, we couldn't do all this good yeah. stuff, and I'm so incredibly impressed with what they do. And, and uh, one thing I'd like to mention, Bear Country, they're very uh, thankful, you know, I mean, Murphy's been doing this for, and John as well, they've been doing it for a very long time. Um, and, you know, uh, they said that FCAP, you know, sports was one of, not, one of the best, if not the best, when they come, that it's good quality, the live stream is pretty cool, the, if we record it and post that, it, it's always like really good quality. Um, and, you know, um, yeah, we, we just charge that. But, but you're right, the money is going to become a problem yeah. as people drop cake. And yeah. and I don't think it's that bad yet. But it's not there yet, but I mean, if this bill doesn't pass, we're going to have to start looking into it. So, well, so there's, a, there's a bill that will cause yeah. uh, a Comcast to have to pay us for people that are just doing insane. Right, right. But um, I know that in Vermont, um, a lot of the, the stations have had to go, like the, the station I came from, has had to go to the towns and say, if you want us to consistently cover your meetings, you have to you have to provide us with some. Because some of the towns were depending upon the meetings, they didn't hire a recording secretary to go to the meetings. Somebody had to watch the meetings and do the minutes from the meetings. So they would have to kick in a few thousand dollars to support the station. Because you could be, you're doing most of the select board meetings now, or town meetings, but you could be doing, there's so many more school meetings you could be doing. And uh, John was saying that the school committee gives them some hard party a little bit, but people have to understand that if it's a public meeting, they can't keep the press out. This is the press. And they can't, you know, tell you to not film something. They cannot tell you not to come. Uh, but the know. press doesn't come to our select board meetings anymore. They just watch it on FCAP. Yeah, yeah, they do. They do yeah. but, yeah. But, but there's many more. I mean, and I don't Charge want to denigrate anything. Yeah. Yeah. These guys do. Charge them. What they do is amazing. But there could be a lot more that we're doing. But I don't know if we can do that. If we, I don't know what your, your budget is. And if you need more staff to cover. I, I think doing those meetings are not as exciting as doing the sports. The, 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 I know for uh, what's nice now is with the... Um, some of the meet meetings, you know, they're able, I, I know the Conway one, they have this like camera, it's like a 360 camera, so if someone speaks, it's on them. Is that the, Those so, are the yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. So, so, you know, I mean, if, if every meeting was able to do the that. The issue with the owl, so I have noticed, is Sunderland has an owl, and they were using it, and now I have Morgan cover them, and the reason being is because the audio is not good. The owls do not let you have an external source of audio. Uh, it uses a microphone, which is unfortunate because if they allowed you to plug in my board with several gooseneck microphones, you could have a really nice recording. But because of that, we are recording Conway's meeting, select board meetings, we're covering Sunderland's. I know Deerfield, they're not using it now, but they, they have like a webcam and they need our help to run the camera to help cover it, so we do that. But that's the big thing, it's just the audio on the L is not very good. And, and I, I remember um, with 
was it the Conway one last year that took like six, seven hours to do, and they took a break. In oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then I know they had, uh, I was told from Alec, and I think- <laughs> That was the town meeting. The town meeting, and you guys recovered it. And I think I was away for in Utah during that, but- um, Must be you. <laughs> I was told that it only, I, 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 was, I saw it, well, no, 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 I, I was at the long one. Yeah. Um, but this, this year, I saw it was only like an hour and a half. The last, the, the last the special one, one was- um, So, so they still, quite, quite, there's still like, does each, each town have like four or like a meeting every year? Like yes, yeah, so each town has a special is an annual town meeting every year. That's one that we cover and we set up multiple cameras. I mentioned that in the report. That's a usual thing that we cover as well as the specials because they're very important. And, and one question I did have is if, like, as someone who lives in Deerfield, um, if I like wanted to go vote, what is it, but I just need, and I'm not trying to like the camera, what, what would, what would be like the answer to that, you know, like, what? you could get your thing and hold it up. Yeah, yeah they, if you're a dear oh, relation, yeah. just check in, and you sign, click. and they give you your thing, you go. Didn't you do that? I did that at one because my dad's girlfriend really wanted me to vote. They said, they were, they read, read the votes, and then everyone yeah. voted for it, and it passed. So, oh. and then they really didn't be back one. Yeah. Are there any other questions um, for well, Kevin? Yeah, uh, uh, all right. I mean, I'm so impressed with what these guys do. I'm, I know just, I'm just learning. Sorry. I'm just learning, uh, you know, how to do all the editing and stuff. <laughs> well, good to you. Sorry. Said, Hi. Okay. Hi. I got to go. Um, so but this, with this, with this. Hold meeting, on to me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Marie is making comments, and then Marie yeah. will ask I, a question. I just have one question. I, I finished the minutes, but I just wanted to know that meeting date for the next one so that I can just send them out. February 22nd. Okay, at 5.30? Yes, and that is going to be election of officers. Okay, okay, perfect. I thought that the election was going to be at the budget hearing and I, at the budget meeting and I did not schedule them for tonight, so we will do one in February and do that then and get that resolved. Well, I'm, I'm very excited about the new studio, and I was just wondering if it's possible to start new programming, because I know one of the programs that was very popular when I ran a station was to have the police chiefs come in and do a little 10-minute yeah. roundup, and we've got, you know, several police chiefs, and we can talk to them to coming in, but Bichar did a great job the other night, because he's also the emergency manager, talking about issues and things, and I think that could be a very popular show. Um, and I, if we're able to do something like, I mean, we could just bring them in and send them there, uh, you know. I, I, the yeah, I like, I like it as well, and I, I'm sure, uh, as I, I, mean, I know that both the Deerfield uh, Police Chief as well as the Greenfield one, I don't, don't really know the, the other towns really at all, but um, I could definitely reach out at least to the, the Greenfield and Deerfield one. Well, we don't do Greenfield. Now, do you think he covers Greenfield? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, Deerfield, I, Conway, Sunderland, Lake Lake. But I think I know John Pichort pretty well, and I'm sure he could talk to the other the other police chiefs. You've got a new police chief up there, right? I mean, but, you know, have them come in, you know, and rotate it. So one will have them come in one a week and have them do one thing a month. I think yeah. it would be very, you know, you have them do a little 10-minute a little ten minute roundup. They can do a little roundup of what the major problems are. Um, John did an excellent job the other night going through all the damages of, of the town, and he was very articulate. And, uh, hmm. It's usually pretty people get excited about yeah. that kind of stuff. And, and I think as well that'd be something too that you know volunteers if they you know are and volunteers are interested in doing so or if, you're gonna, if, and if you're interested in kind of organizing, then I'm sure John and Murphy would kind of like I mean I Yeah, I have nothing else to do, so I'm, I'm very happy to <laughs> Can I raise one more suggestion yeah, sort of like that? Yeah. Um, a few months ago, I forget how long ago, I went to an event at GCTV, mm -hmm. where there's a group of women who meet all year long and they write poetry. Mm -hmm. And they get together and they have a poetry reading in the main front room there of GCTV, and GCTV films it and it goes out. And it just, and, and it was really nice. I mean, what makes it a big deal is that they've been doing it for years, they do it every year, and they get a whole crowd of people to come in and listen yeah. to the yeah. Well, I think, and, and, I think that we could talk to Jennifer too, because there's a lot of stuff that the seniors do that might lend itself something, to. Something that the school does is the poetry yeah. slam. Yeah. 
Yeah, I know Mr. Don, I don't know if Mr. Pagan still does it. Yeah, but it just made me wonder if there's something like that that we could, that that FCAT could do. And just, just like that. I, 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 I did the vote you're saying when I was in high school, I, in my junior year, and I came third one year, so, you know, I don't think we filmed it at that time, but I think I'm sure if we, you know, asked the, the school or... Well, there might be some poets in the community, too. I mean, I'm sure. if you get people in to participate in programs, and they might get interested in actually producing a program and find somebody who's really we just into that to, stuff. Yeah, and we've been, doing, we've been doing yeah. a lot of oral interviews with people this year, and I think that w w Peter and I are trying to work on producing um, little short um, videos. We probably wouldn't be in here, but... Um, in case somebody was curious, um, I mentioned in my report about possibly bringing guest speakers of the person that Marie and Peter are working with, the declines are going to make, yeah. but I would be interested in looking into getting like grants to bring in like the clients to teach people how to do like really good interviews and all, and that's one of the programs we want to look into doing is like bringing in like professionals help teach us stuff because me and Murphy, we can teach a lot, but you know, I have somebody who's already yeah, made yeah, a name for themselves. So. Yeah, right. I'm frankly, as an employee here, I'm a little concerned that both these guys are like a, they're shouldering a huge, heavy load, and I'm really impressed, but I'm also a little concerned. Uh, I don't know if there's any way that we can lighten John's load a little bit. I mean, he's programming three channels, and he's producing all these things, and he's pumping out these videos. I mean, the guy's amazing, but well, thank you. I've been I've been the I've been the victim of burnout myself, and I'd like to help him not burn out. So I don't know if there's something the board can do to help him. Yeah. Um, you know, um, and, 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 I don't know if there's something he can do. Well, he's quite a media person. You look just did it. the programming of the channels. She was, she was I did the program, program in the channel, so I did programming. You know, what, what I'm saying, what, what we used to have was we had a station director outreach and we had a media director, and I think what most stations do. And what that person does, does the, the, the day in and day out of the programming the channels. Yeah. And then also being be, uh, uh, someone who keeps the door open. So you're, you're managing the workload, you're going out and getting people set up. If, you're, if you were if you didn't have to write the program for everything. other channels and you had someone to do that, then you can focus on those other things that you and, want and to expand it. No, I enjoy programming the channels. Uh, <laughs> so I like to be those. You're not gonna be I think he's good at it too. Yeah, yeah. I mean <laughs> I already have like a format going and you know and But yeah, in you know, all seriousness, I did reach out to Ben Roberts the other day about having him come in and help me edit together meetings that we yeah. download. So Delegate. I am going to be looking into delegating stuff. And if you're interested too, Marie. Well, and, and, I, I have to learn. That's the problem. And, 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 you know, yeah, I, know, uh, I, I do want, I am good. And I wanted to talk to you about this, but I was uh, busy today, but wanted to set up like, a meeting with you next week about maybe discussing doing more of this and having Morgan do more as well. Um, so, so yeah, so, yeah. I mean, yeah, me and you, we could have a conversation as well, too. I mean, for the sports, uh, Kevin Murphy does the um, Green Bay Bird. Winter is a busy time for us, like everyone. I mean, it's the holidays and whatnot. Um, and I, Absolutely love working with you guys. This is the most enjoyable job I've ever had, and I loved it when I was volunteering with you. I feel a little guilty now when I'm getting paid, but I, I mean, working with these guys when they've got a multi, multi camera thing, having John whispering into my ear, I just absolutely adore it. Um, it's, it's wonderful. Why do I whisper to your ear? Well, <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> I love it when Kevin directs, I love it when you direct, 
and you're just, you know, you're there, you're, you're right with us, and you're telling everybody where to go, and we're all one organism, and it's cool as hell. And, and, and <laughs> you know, one thing, um, Murphy, we, me, Murphy, and Ben, uh, we have a group chat for the sports, um, and uh, uh, we're, or, uh, we, we, last night, uh, me and Ben did South Africa's uh, Frontier, and two students who I did, I did not know they were gonna show up, so I only had really a spot for one of them. So, you know, we used to do like fo football. I remember when I was in high school, we did there was like a three or two camera shoot um, for the spring sports. You know, and that's kind of, that's ahead of us. You know, um, is uh, baseball, softball. We it can be a two camera shoot, but you, you really Same. need Same. at least two people. Oh, just kind of at the very least, two people. And you no, need really three people that are doing well. Um, and like so, you know, it's nice that Ben came back. You know, I'm glad. You know, he's kind of Alex replacement as Alex. You know, has a full time job now. And Murphy, I know he like. Well, I love Alex. He's such a. I know, I know. And, and Murphy, he, he, he uh, it, it would be nice if we could lighten his load of. Yes. It would just be nicer for him. Because well, like I said, you know, next week I want to talk to Dan. I'd like to talk to Morgan about having him do some more and meeting kind of production I mean, stuff. I'm happy to do, roll things out. So. I'm happy to do more meetings if you need them to do more production. The one thing, too, with the South County more. Spotlight, I think we do have some talent here in the room, too. I don't want to be the only person to host it. I'd like to see Morgan host some of the shows if he would like. Yeah, I probably could. Tom, I would like to see. I think Ben would be very good too. Yeah, can you in front of it? We're going to have to get a second SD card if we do that. There's going to be a lot of takes if you have me on the <laughs> um, But I also think that. Uh, I don't want to be the voice of South County. I, I, I want to do something because I have the skills to do it, but I like to give other people the opportunity and, and to do it too. And, and I was going to mention, you know, like something like that would definitely interest me. And I think more, you know, Mason and Tyler, they're students. You know, juniors at the frontier, so you know, um, and they do a very good job. You know, they do do a very good job, and uh, it's nice that we have them on board right now as volunteers. Uh, and then, uh, you know, maybe it's over the summer. I mean, as well as going into the spring season, it would be nice to have another at least spring sports me meeting where you know Marie or Morgan, you know, and some of the board members could, so we can all just uh, you know yeah. come together again before the next season of things. We are going to be having a staff meeting, maybe get a couple pizzas and talk about the plan of action, because town meeting season is also going to be coming up too oh, after yeah. March. Uh, we yeah. want to be all on board for the end. When, when, do you know when the first town meeting is? I couldn't tell you right now, they'll schedule that. I can tell you that the Deerfield town meeting, because they announced it people last people night. Oh, okay. Yeah, Deerfield's usually one of the first ones, isn't it? I think Conway's the first one. Oh. No. Conway was the last, last one last year. The, 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 the good thing... Um, Deerfield is April 29th. Oh, that's great, right. because I'll be, the ski season will long be yeah. over by then. Deerfield. We'll have one before then, though, because I want to do a talk about sports and everything. Oh, yeah. so. well, I one, think Deerfield's usually the first town meeting we do. So one thing I... It uh, goes from April to June. One thing, we have, uh, no, no, we, we have a play coming up. So then we play the musical, right, Murphy? So Morgan and Marie, like, we have the, the I, front end musical. All you have to do is, is text me and ask me if I'm available. Because I'm, I'm, text? I'm, 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 when, when is, do you know when text is? Text is in February. It's as long as it's not on a Saturday. It's, it's a Saturday. Saturday. Let February 10th. February 10th. I'll check my schedule. Uh, so if I click on that, what list the topics they're going to talk about? Uh, no, that that link topics. there is just to our videos to get to the. They don't. They're not really good with their marketing. They don't have a website. They have a Facebook page that died. They have an Instagram page that died. They just that they, it's student run. Yeah. I only hear about it from. from it, 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 I, 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 I want to go. We're 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 also, we have to talk about here as well. We have clubs in there. Every year, so, like so, do, so the TEDx is run by students and one advisor, uh, faculty advisor. They do a decent job, it looks really good when it's done, but yeah. it, it's a long road to get there. Okay. Where is the press? In their uh, uh, auditorium, in Shelburne Falls. Uh, yeah. 
Wait, you're you're putting putting it down? Down? So, uh, are there any other questions? Move or later. Here? All right, so uh, here is one more question. It looks uh, well, like. really a question, but it was a thoughts about uh, one of Marie's comments about getting some public, like the police chief or whatever. One of the things that uh, I noticed is that a, a lot of times agencies like the police department or the highway department or whatever, they're an amorphous entity. Having someone who comes from those agencies and becomes a familiar face, it's a lot easier in town meeting to get budgets passed yeah. if you're talking about familiar faces and, and what they're up against. And I was on the police advisory committee in my town of Vermont. Hmm. And there was a constant crowd, small, who wanted to do away with the police department entirely. <laughs> oh. And, you know, we got the chief of police to come in and, and do a, a bi-monthly program. And it, it was it was a real uh, eye-opener eye for people in terms of what the crime rate was, what, they, what the police department actually did. It, 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 it's just a, a real nice way to reach out for the departments in the towns. Mm, yeah. and, and that way, you know, you don't show up at a town meeting and your budget's up for grabs <coughs> and you haven't got a clue as to who's bitching. Yep. But there's always going to be somebody that has problems. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, then they become the, the wild card in your budget. So if you've got people that you know they're doing the job, you're familiar with them, you're familiar with what the departments do, and then if we get a crisis like we've got in Deerfield right now with the road system, and John can go on and say, look, that road's still closed. We lost a million dollars worth of gravel on this road. Uh, you know, that's the kind of information that people need on a regular basis, face to face with the agency sponsor. Right. And, and we've got a new uh, EMS chief coming in brand new EMS chief and it would be a good way to introduce them. Yeah. I do and want I, to do an interview with them with the uh, And, and I'm willing to, to do some outreach and, and sign people up for those things. All right, great. And then we come up with a, I, a schedule. Well, yeah, I also think DPW does all kinds of stuff. Speaking of the flooding and everything. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you can get All kinds of stuff that, that yeah. you know you don't know. And as a taxpayer, yeah. you say, damn, you, know, you write out that check and it's paid. It can be yeah. pretty painful. Well, yeah. But if you know that, hey, this is actually what's keeping, you know, the things that you see that aren't broken actually working because of their hard work. Well, that's what they did the other night. In, in the special, they had a special meeting in Deerfield. And it was the first time that I had really heard the extent of the damages from this summer. And, yeah. and the newspapers didn't cover it adequately. And when the, and when the, the chief got none and talking about and showing pictures of every place and saying, well, this four million will just is just the emergency repairs. We're gonna well, here we, all the places we're gonna go to try to get money to right. do the, the long term repairs and what we're looking and this is how much money we saved because we did X, Y, and Z. Right. They're not gonna have any trouble passing that I mean, that special yeah, because otherwise if you just see a bunch of high numbers, it's yeah. like, man, this yeah. looks like a waste. Where is it all going? Well, you yeah. can point to where it goes. Yeah. And, and, it's better. and you know, for example, I uh, I live on Upper Road. I cut, I came home and uh, well, in the past couple of years, they've cut down a lot of trees. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something that's been brought up at Conway Town meetings as well. You know, big big oaks and trees that you know they're healthy and people cut them down. But um, my point is, is I think we had every single telephone pole that was near at the bottom of my. Uh, driveway, all were new poles in like the last five or ten years now because of the amount of trees that fell on the tower line. So right. Eversource is doing a good job of cutting those trees down. But I was coming home from Vermont on Sunday night and I had no idea that Upper Road was closed. Oh yeah. So there was like four loud trucks I think I passed. You know, I'm going right because they closed where the bridge was and um, Lower Road had some really bad damages. And actually, there's still, like I was telling, I think John uh, Murphy, that there's a dip. Like, you can you can actually go and see where exactly. The trees fell? No, not the tree. No, the, the, the water. The gully was. Where the gully was. And yeah. they closed that road for, I think, two months. I mean, obviously, once. Oh, you mean, like, from this summer? 
Yeah. From, yeah, yeah, from the summer. Well, from the summer I storms. think uh, the information that Gay gave uh, at that presentation was very good. We covered it, and that video now has 200 views, which goes to show that our stuff is very effective and well, I, I is a very yeah, important yeah, thing John, to John, John, you cover it, your hand is covered enough. The, 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 and it shows that our videos are very, when I'm not covering them up, are very important to the <laughs> <laughs> but, but I think it's important to tell that kind of story. And one of the things that I think is important to tell that kind of story that I would suggest is that you publish some kind of annual report saying how many meetings you cover in each town and, and other you know, specific things that, and how many views that things are getting in. And like, you know, I'll include that in the report for next year then. Because uh, the annual report so is. So my question is, you them. put information in the town report, so they let you put anything in the town reports? Well, they do, and I'll include that, but yeah, not maybe Because people need to see this as a vital part of their network. Because the other night, when somebody gave you a hard time because you weren't live streaming the meeting. You're oh, getting spoiled. Yeah. But yeah. you guys were live streaming something else. So well, you can't live stream things at night. Yeah, yeah. We, we try to live stream as, as stuff that is indoors as much as possible yeah. for the sports. Yeah. Now, when we, we have other things that are going on, and when we have, say, Murphy had a hockey game to cover at four, yeah. you can't be in two places at once. No. <laughs> and, and too much. But also, the two, town didn't two, ask Yeah, we had two different right? live streams. We yeah. were asked to record it, and we weren't asked to live stream. The stream. town didn't ask. And, 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 yeah, it, it, but, it, some, but the people were mad that it wasn't being live streamed. Well, I think in moving forward, if for anything like that, I'm going to just ask in general if we should live stream and, it. And, 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 I think the situation it. was the snow. I think and, so. there's, and there's things that like but we John can't had it control. Up the next day. I mean, he had it up the next day. There's things we can't control, though, is the yeah. weather. It took me two hours to edit it together. Yeah, but I, I mean, it probably should have been live streamed, and I think, like I said, we'll be forward. I'm going to let the towns know that we will provide that service next time to do that just so. Well, they're getting spoiled. And I they need to understand that this is a vital service, but they shouldn't take you for granted. Okay. I mean, they really shouldn't take you for granted. It, it's 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 a, a vital service that you're offering. We and and people are you know it. It's not easy for us to all do. I mean, I worked as a volunteer for what a year and a half here before you brought me on, so I can't complain about doing anything because I'm so, paid for it now. So but. next, I will. I'm going to mention next week we have. Uh, there's. Four games, or there's five games in five days, but we're not covering them Wednesday because there's no way to game at Drury. And there's four home games, and I think we're at least going to cover three. Monday night, Tuesday night is Bear Country, so take their audio. Uh, Wednesday we're off. Thursday it, uh, it's home, and we're going to cover that one as well. And it's just nice when we have volunteers that would like to. So I can have Mason like commentate. You know, right now it's a busy, se uh, busy season for students because it's a, um, and Murphy, because it's the end of the semester. Mm -hmm. So it's the end of the first semester, right? So, you know, um, just again, it's a busy time of year, and if we can live stream something, we can I would be really <laughs> careful to start <coughs> promising um, I'm much sorry, live stream. No, 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 that's what I'm saying. I, I, can, can I finish my point? I'm saying if, if we can record something, that's great. If we can live stream something, you know, great. You know, but if we can record live streaming is not as easy. <laughs> I, I gotta I gotta go. I said Okay. Yeah. All right. I think we're adjourning. Okay. And one thing I will say too and I agree, Bob, is live streaming is not as easy as a lot of people think it is. And that's one of the issues with doing that. Um, we live stream town meetings. It might be getting easier in the years to come because you know technology is getting better, so it's something that maybe consider. So if people complain, tell them to come to the meeting. That's that's what I was gonna say. So, you know, like if, if people are complaining I, about something that's not live stream, just go to the so, meeting. So uh, I think that's what we're gonna do. So um, I don't know about you guys, but. Um, Right. I'm getting pretty tired. I was in yeah. the yeah. office at 7 a.m. So motion to adjourn. Our next meeting will be February 22nd at 5.30 p.m. We'll be elected officers. And then after that, the next meeting will be the fourth Wednesday, uh, Thursday in March for the budget. So thank you for coming and have a nice day.